Hello traders at CMC Markets. Welcome to another update. I'm preparing this early in the morning of September the 1st, non-farm payroll day. My name is Trevor Neal. I am a research director at RRG Research and I'm presenting to you from London. In front of this important data release, we're going to do analysis on foreign exchange, major pairs, and also we're going to follow through on uh, the DAX and the FTSE, two things that we have favoured in recent days. A quick glance at the daily relative rotation graph. And we continue to see uh, the outstanding feature, which is that the NASDAQ is, is the only one moving in the northeasterly direction, so improving uh, JDK RS ratio and improving um, momentum, relative momentum. So this is pointing upwards and heading northeastly in the leading quadrant. Just in the leading quadrant are the S&P, very static, so still right of the 100 level, so on a relative ratio basis uh, outperforming the MSCI World Index. All of the European indices except for the, uh, uh, the FTSE are in the uh, weakening quadrant and heading in a southwesterly uh, direction looking like on a relative basis weakening um, further and then the FTSE is still uh, now looking rather sick here. The Russell 2000 and looking extremely ill is, uh, is the uh, Heng Seng. But uh, here's, here's the uh, Dow down here, also heading into the lagging quadrant, quite purposefully in that direction. So the message from this is that uh, from not from a short term trading perspective, but the, but the trend for the short term trader is that uh, the only game in town on the upside is the Nasdaq. On the downside, we've got the, the FTSE, we've got the, uh, the Dow now, um, and all the European indices are weak. And the S&P itself is, is fairly statically quite good, if you like, um, against the MSCI World Index, but really for directional with a long tail, it's the Nasdaq. Now, Nasdaq has had a good run up since the 18th, the of the 18th, one a big 50% pullback um, on the 24th, and then back up again and moving up strongly. Some signs of nerves at the end of Thursday, um, awaiting the non-farm payroll data, um, and probably uh, for until the data comes out, we will pause around here at the resistance of uh, the 4th of August um, at 15,500, big uh, just a round number. So it's come to a, a kind of a halt there. Uh, the next resistance above, it would, if it were to break up, is 15,788. Now a word about uh, the non-farm pro uh, payroll. Of course, we can only guess at the number. Um, the, there is almost always high volatility around the number. Uh, there are always e expectations, ke clearly with the action or the uh, uh, indices, the uh, expectations are that the number is going to be good. And so anything less than good is going to be disappointing for the market. Adding to volatility is the uh, economist's um, ability to forecast incorrectly fairly consistently incorrectly uh, the not these uh, significant data GDP not non-farm payroll etc et so that adds to volatility because often the expectations of the market are wrong-sided for it so I'm not going to guess on that today but so what can happen well we've we've come come to a bit of a halt here but I think that's only because now we must wait to find out if the if the market breaks the high it probably will do it with great uh, velocity and then the next resistance and it is fair resistance will be at 15,800. We can see that beyond that we've got a, another high up here at 15,940. So that would be the next if we break that. That's quite tough that one. This is not tough uh, this one. The, um, if it turns down and um, th the trigger could be uh, a break of this 15,000 uh, 450 level, um, then I think we can come back down 
to find uh, one of the support levels. The first one we come to is 15,300 um, and uh, that's not very strong. The, um, as I call it, the um, NVIDIA high here at 15,270, that's also not that strong. Stronger, I think, is support would be 15,200 down in here. Now the indicators have, t have turned down. Uh, this is the MACD has turned down on this pause. Uh, the RSI, the, the next most sensitive, has definitely turned down, and the slow stochastic is is going down from a high reading. So were it not for the fact that we had uh, data coming out, I think this would be quite a good sell setup for break of this low, protecting yourself above this high, a uh, fifth. 15,590 um, and then looking for one of these uh, we could these uh, support levels to hold most likely it would be this one here at 15,200 quite good risk reward ratio on that but do you want to, to go against the trend of the strongest index uh, out there just in front of non-farm payroll that's up to you and how dangerously you want to live very similar picture here on the S&P. We've stalled, we've eased, eased back a bit, um, waiting for the release of the data. We've done it at a fairly obvious point, 4,500, you know, that round number uh, there, and that high also. Above us, we've got a small amount of resistance at 15,540, but if we were to break up, if the news is better than expected, uh, 4,600 would be the next uh, level that we uh, should manage to get through. Uh, too. So breaking of this high will be the, the signal that we're on our way up. Uh, don't forget the position of the uh, of the S&P in the RRG graph, quite close to the uh, MSCI World benchmark that we've been using, um, not really moving, so holding steady on a relative basis, but not showing increasing uh, momentum and ratio like the NASDAQ, so not as good looking from an intermediate term point of view but still you know again from the 18th it has, has progressed a long way expectations are good for this data we have turned over um, uh, you see the MACD has crossed down uh, the RSI plunging through 50 um, and the stochastic is, is, is deep here so we're a lot more progressed in the fall um, than we were we were on the Nasdaq again this if you were if it wasn't for the data release being imminent um, I would say that um, this would be quite a good uh, thing to have got to get short of um, at five at Below, particularly on the break of 4,500, you've got the obvious protection here, you've got weak support here, but you've got strong support here, 4,450. So if it gives way or if the market disappoints, that's how I think it's going to evolve. But clearly if we break this high, that's not happening and we're on our way up to 4,600. The Dow Jones Industrial Average is, uh, you will remember, moving quite purposefully through the weakening uh, quadrant towards uh, the lagging quadrant. Uh, this has not got the big uh, jump that, uh, from, uh, from the 18th that we had in the other markets. It has struggled. It is really very reluctant participation in steadiness. We've got um, resistance at 35 and 72. The big resistance, though, are these two, or you might say three tops at uh, 35,620. Um, uh, there, there is good support here at uh, 34,500, uh, and then support here, 34,068, and strong support from consolidation um, here at 33,500. The MACD in this case is moving up on the hourly chart. Uh, the RSI has just dropped down with this last sell-off uh, last night um, in the market and then we just hooked over with a new fresh sell signal in the stochastic um, on that last hour. So, uh, I mean, it, 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 is, it is a weak um, index. Um, it has turned down. Again, if it wasn't uh, for this, this data release, um, you could uh, probably get short now um, and protect yourself above the high um, here at 35,090. Um, but 
the potential on the downside is somewhat limited. I don't think it's a worth doing as a trade. It, the, risk, the reward is not great enough for the risk you, you have to take on it, particularly given the moment that, that we're in. But if, let's say, after the uh, data is released, we do come down and come down rather mildly to this quite strong support here, uh, 34,500, and it holds there, I think there's back bounce potential in this, despite its position in RRG. Now, last night the FTSE dumped in the last couple of hours, uh, fell down very hard indeed, crossing over the uh, MACD. And so here we have quite a toppy formation and potentially a significant break um, in front of this uh, non-farm payroll uh, data. So any downward move here, any weakness this morning, follow through is actually, um, uh, we should follow through downwards. 7,436 is the, is the break point. Support comes in, it starts to come in at 7,388, but it's not that strong. And the, the big support is from this one, two, three lows here at 7,220. Um, there's, uh, it's vulnerable to falling a lot, uh, this, if it follows through. Um, if we break up through uh, 7,510, um, uh, we've broken through this uh, little topping area and the turning point in the MACD, but there's considerable resistance up there, extending all the way up to 7,600. It's got layers of resistance. There's another resistance as well. So I think that uh, this is going to... Uh, resolve itself on the downside. It's vulnerable to quite a sharp fall. Of course, the uh, it will be waiting for the uh, non-farm payroll this morning. It probably won't do anything or be aware of a, of treachery. You know, fall here on low volume. Uh, you know, before the number. But if if after the number and the sort out, we're starting to go down. This part here particularly could be quite quick. And then uh, really the, the strong support is right down here. And we've got a clear um, place to place a stop above this high here. The DAX is a very interesting point technically. Um, it's come up uh, strongly like the other indices, except for the FTSE, uh, since the, and the Dow, since the 18th, uh, up to this resistance level at 16,060, and on the last couple of hours of last night, uh, dumped. It's uh, also approaching this gap here. Uh, to fill the gap, we need to go to 16,200. And then the next level is the highs here at 16,511. Um, support wise, we've got minor support right where we are now. Uh, we've got uh, further support at uh, 15,888 and then strong support at 15,800. So we've got a strong move up here. We've got a crossover of, of the um, MACD, but it is still rising, the MACD. Um, so this could be merely an interruption in an uptrend. The RSI shows a big correction. We've come down uh, to below 50, so whatever excesses of overbought we've had has been unwound. Um, and here, the slow stochastic has, gave us a sell right at the high here, and it's still in progress. So um, I think that um, it's quite likely that the um, uh, the, the FTSE is going to the uh, DAX is going to re regain its composure maybe uh, around where we are or 15,800 and then break through this high here at 16,060 and push on forward and continue this uptrend here. Um, if, uh, if there is um, no rally, so if it doesn't hold, keeps on drifting, um, particularly if it gets through this area here at 15,800, then I think that the, the, the market has turned and the, this uh, longer term indicator is correct. And um, it's more than a reaction and it is a reversal, um, but it's very well supported here. And I don't think it's worth really selling uh, this given the amount of support close by below. But if we do reverse this short-term pullback um, and then start to move up um, and break uh, the, the high here, then I think we've got a quite a good run up ahead of us there. So watch for a turn in the DAX. Right, starting with the Euro. Uh, the Euro sunk hard 
down to uh, support at 108.40, 10836. A uh, high, high, low, low here, and it's holding overnight. It's been good enough uh, holding to reverse the MACD into a buy message. Uh, the RSI has already come up uh, strongly. It's at 50 now, um, and the Stochastic, after bullish divergences, has pushed ahead strongly and uh, is in the process of, of, of uh, having you long of the market. So th we've got the opportunity to structure a trade here, uh, uh, which um, could do service well, given that we're waiting for impending data. Um, just before we start that, there's one thing I want to point out is that this long move here downwards, let me just show you here, that we had in the in the euro ended with a reverse head and shoulders so here low lower low lower low lower low lower low two heads here a higher low neckline breakout impulsive breakout from the neckline measure from the head to the neckline um, neckline split take it up and that takes us to 109.30 which is where we got to so it's complete that uh, pattern so going back to the present short term present and here we go here let us say that um, we are in the turning uh, the pausing point um, if we break these highs here 108.55 let's say uh, 65 for safety um, it, uh, I think that we're going to go further up and to the strong resistance which is at 109.30 so that's a good minimum price objective we've got an obvious place to uh, protect ourselves uh, below this level here these two highs and these two lows here at 108.36 and so 108 let us say 28 would be a logical place to place the order if it breaks that level i'd want to be short um, i think the potential is more on the upside but um it uh, it uh, uh, would fall from there I would suggest um, and then likely find minor support here and is minor support at 107.80 but stronger support at 107.66 the, the better trade is likely to be if we do break up and we break down but we're in a little pausing action here breaking up from the pause uh, should infer a good move up breaking down from the pause should meet, uh, infer a move down but through a quagmire of uh, support. So some one of those is going to happen uh, today, that is for sure. And uh, I think that we're in for a good move up or down in this, but we've got our levels and that's the advantage, of course, of technical analysis. Our cable, oh, this is a bring in a bit of data here. I'll, I'll stretch it out in a moment. Uh, cable has got two consolidations, a big consolidation above, which it punched into, got to the middle of and was rejected. And then it's got a support consolidation below and we're right sitting on it now. So bear that in mind for context. Looking more closely, remember this is a punching into an area of resistance. It's gonna be hard to go up. It is, however, come down to the uh, support generated by this high this high small consolidation this low and there so that's a sizable support level so uh, that's a good place uh, to initiate a trade or exit a trade on the break of that level if we stead if we steady up through the one um, 1.290 level here then i think we could push to uh, one uh, 2720 to 12745 area but it's going to be slow and hard to do um, the, the resistance is much stronger than the support on the support side if we were to break down from it then we've got support at um, uh, 12620 um, and really strong support um, around this 12560 level here so that's about as far as you could hope to get for it but you you are selling into support if you buy you're buying into substantial resistance if uh, strong resistance if you sell you're selling into support it's not a great trade it's not a breakout trade it's not like neither of them are likely to have uh, velocity to them then finally the australian dollar here it is in the, in the big picture here um, we've got uh, the resistance at uh, 64.48 uh, uh, this is of course dollar 
uh, the Australian versus dollar versus the dollar. We've got significant resistance from these two tops here um, at uh, 65.19. It's quite well supported um, here at 64.59 and then other support levels and the consolidation uh, down in here. Um, the sort of intermediate term trend is mildly upwards at the moment. Now it is in a tight range at the moment. Um, the bottom of the range is, is uh, around 64.60. Top of the range, maybe a bit higher, that comes from that previous high there. I would put it at uh, 64.96, 65 uh, level there. So we're ranging in there. Break out of a range, particularly an extended range like this one, normally in, uh, initiates good trades. But we see that it's really churning around a lot. I think that the, the upside, if we break up, is quite limited up to this strong resistance at uh, 65.20. If, if we break down, we come down into support. There's more downside than upside for this um, 64 that the round number would be a target so i would of the two i prefer the breakdown um, uh, i would let the the um, all of these lows give way before uh, getting in and saying that this range is broken because we have had spikes before and then if that does happen i'd be looking for for this uh, 64 low and using this consolidation as a protection but the, the consolidations are wide enough to make the trade not that attractive from a risk reward uh, perspective i think the probability is quite high but the risk reward is um, quite limited and so it's not my favorite trade I thank you very, very much, uh, everybody. I wish you the best today with non-farm payrolls. So you will probably, almost certainly, get uh, a volatility as a result. Um, I hope this is fi you find this helpful in preparation for that. I uh, wish you a great day. And from Trevor Neal here in London at RRG Research, may the trend be with you. Goodbye.